Hey there, everybody. Aaron here. Welcome to another episode of Gideon's Tactical. Today, I got an EDC review for you. We're checking out the Kershaw Link. I got both versions for you. I got the more budget item uh, stonewashed finish with the GRN handles and a little bit more expensive, a little bit flashier, aluminum handled with black wash coating version. I got both of these blades that we're gonna check out today. You know, Kershaw is known for making a lot of budget items that are overseas produced. And I'm really glad to see that Kershaw's brought it back to the US with these two models and given us a, at a great price point two USA made knives that we can check out here today. So we're gonna do the full litany for you. We're gonna give you the ergonomic reviews and quality reviews and all those different you know rating system that we do. And overall, just show you in action an EDC task, how this Kershaw link in both versions is gonna stand up and how it's gonna perform. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start reviewing the Kershaw link. Okay, let's look at the two different styles you can get here on the blade, the business end of the knife. And we'll talk about the steel as as well. Now I have the drop point models. You can also get them Tanto models. So something to note there, I opted for the drop point. That's just what I prefer. But if you like Tantos, they do make that as well. Then you can get stone wash or you can get black wash. The stone wash is on the cheaper model with the GRN handles. The black wash is going to be on the aluminum hand handled model. And that's going to be a little bit more expensive by about six or $7. So uh, two different options there for you, two different price points. I definitely like the black wash with the aluminum handle scales it really stands out from the crowd this this setup just is very basic you see it a lot on Kershaw's this not so much now on to the steel. The steel 420 high carbon is a US made steel and uh, Kershaw does a good job. A lot of companies do it, Buck, Gerber, uh, Kershaw, and there are a few others I know out there, US companies that make it. It's a budget steel. It's not a super steel, but it's a great budget steel. You're gonna see the same edge retention uh, and resharpening capabilities that you would see on basic OS 8 from let's say like Ontario on the RAP Model 1 or any of Kershaw's 8CR13 MOV steels. It's gonna be very similar to that. Very easy to resharpen. It's going to hold an okay edge. It'll, it'll dull pretty quick. You don't have to resharpen it, but for uh, the price point that they're hitting, USA made great budget steel. Now the blade length from the handle to the tip is going to be three and a quarter inches on both of these knives, which I think is fantastic. I love that length. It's perfect. Uh, not too big and cumbersome, not too small and can't do anything for you. So I think that's a perfect balance. Love that size. You're going to be getting a hollow grind on both of these knives. You got that unsharpened swedge that they've cut in to kind of you know make it pop a little bit like that a lot into a really aggressive drop point so the point is really dead center to the handle which is going to make for a fantastic penetration you can see there they kind of uh, bring it out and then bring it back in so not too thin not too thick so perfect for really deep penetration if you need that in a stabbing motion if you are or e very easy for it to puncture you know packaging those type of things for edc tasks the other thing to note with these blades i love it the blade is has a continuous sweep another reason why i opted for these models versus the tantos there is never a straight angle on these blades which means that it's going to slice like nobody's business guys and that's where where this blade really shines is that with the hollow grind and how it has a continuous sweep in the knife the entire edge has a continuous sweep this thing goes through cardboard like nobody's business like butter just slices 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 all day long and you're able to do that very nicely and just because of the blade geometry and the continuous sweep it will actually hold its edge a little longer because no particular point on the knife is on cardboard for more than like a millisecond so you're constantly getting a sweep as you cut through that cardboard paracord it was a dream i mean i didn't even have to push it almost like the paracord split apart it was like the red sea and this is moses just splitting the cardboard uh, the uh paracord apart and finally um you know uh feather sticks i did some wood processing as well and um you know it's it these are going to do a good job in that area as well folders i'm never really a big fan of using pocket knives to carve uh, and a full flat grind will be a little bit better uh, at carving wood than a hollow grind, in my opinion. So not at all bad, uh, but obviously these are, you know, EDC knives and penetrating, stabbing. You know, the stabbing task was great. Uh, it's going to do a great job stabbing into anything that you might need to, you know, stick in uh, through packaging or, you know, whatever, bunches, a bunch of cardboard boxes, some other type of material, whatever. So uh, the blade shape, along with everything else, guys, great. I love it. It really stands out. I really, really dig the blade shape and how they've done that blade geometry of that continuous sweep really shines in the use of this lane all right guys i got to give you the quality rating here five out of five very easy to do love this setup on both of these blades the blade centering was perfect on both of these knives you're getting the brass 
uh, bushings in here, so it's going to be very tough, durable. The materials are really well made, USA made, obviously. The handle scales line up well. All those things add up to be just a, a great quality knife, particularly this model up here, the aluminum handled model with the black wash feels like a much more expensive knife. I think it's kind of based off of a, a, a zero tolerance blade. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. I mean, and when you see it, you think at first, you're like, man, is that like, I mean, that could be easily, you know, like a $70, $80 knife is what it looks like. So the quality is phenomenal. And if they just change the blade steel, it could easily be an extremely, you know, high quality knife for the price point though. And in the range of the materials they're using, very top notch, very high quality, five out of five. All right, let's go ahead and look at the value on these two blades. I gotta give you the value rating. So for the cheaper one with the stonewash finish and the GRN handle, you're gonna look right around $35 on Amazon. That's what I paid for it on Amazon, 35 bucks. Then if you're looking at the one with the black wash coating and the gray aluminum handles, you're gonna be looking at $38. So about $3 to $4 more is what you're gonna kind of expect for this model. So what is my opinion? Okay, these are USA made knives, which is huge. Now Kershaw could easily have made this knife in particular with ATR 13 MOV, Chinese made steel, do it over in China and charge us like 25 bucks for it, save us $10. But I'd rather have something that I know US workers are making with a US stamp on there with 420 high carbon and just the, the knowledge of knowing that US manpower made this knife. And for this one, uh, you know, pushing 40 bucks, maybe a little steep, um, you know, compared to other options out there. But again, we're talking USA made. When you think about USA made knives with everything that this knife has to offer, there's not a lot else out there on the market. So I think respectively for their price points, and again, USA made over, a, you know, Chinese or, you know, Taiwanese made blades. Yes, if you buy a knife made over there, you're gonna save yourself 10 bucks, but you're gonna be supporting US workers. So I think guys, uh, a five out of five, depending on the model you want, five out of five for both of them, guys. They're awesome blades and uh, for US, made quality you can't go wrong and uh, i think a very reasonable price point to help support u.s you know products and u.s workers so five out of five on my value rating for the link all right, let's take a peek here at the handles and talk you through the handles and the ergonomic rating for the link. Now, again, we're looking at the two different options for you. The first one, we'll look at the cheaper model, uh, has GRN or glass reinforced nylon handles. You can see there, uh, both of these knives are gonna fit really well in the hand. Feel very comfortable, I wear large size gloves. You can see there my pinky's not wanting to come off. Feels very good in your hand. The GRN is going to have a uh, GRN spacer down the back as well, and you're going to get stainless steel liners down the middle. This model is going to weigh in at 4.2 ounces. They have not machined out or hollowed out the handles at all. That's part of the price point. Um, you know, if they did that, they'd obviously have to charge you more money. But uh, you can see that the GRN handles are um, pretty thick. They, they got a pretty good thickness to it. They're rounded. Um, they kind of have good contours that feel really good. Fill out your hand really well. Very comfortable in your hand, warm to the touch. And then they got this kind of traction down the center that does give you a little bit of traction. Not a huge amount, but it does give you uh, a little bit of traction action and uh, no jimping up above the top. I'm not a huge, you know, jimping fan. It's nice if it's there. It's not a big deal to me though. And that fits really nicely for your thumb. And then you got that really nice uh, finger flipper acts as an extra guard. So you are going to get, be able to get good stabs, I think, without having to, you know, ride up and accidentally hurt yourself. So that's good. So the cheaper model with the GRN handles is very contoured, though a little bit bulkier and a little bit thicker than the other model. The more expensive model down here or above it has aluminum handle scales. Uh, it's going to weigh in at 4.7 ounces. So you're looking at about a half an ounce difference. The aluminum one will obviously be heavier. You can see it's kind of got that gray. Uh, it almost looks like purple on screen, this gray purplish uh, color. I really like it a lot. Uh, you're going to get the exact same thing, steel liners down the middle, and it does have that frame lock, or excuse me, uh, liner lock, not frame lock. You're going to get that exact same GRN spacer down the back, semi-float through construction, no jimping. And again, that uh, finger flipper is going to act as a guard. It's gonna, the exact same handle length of 4.4 inches from back to front for both of these knives. The thing that you'll note, and I'm going to see if you can see it on screen here, is that the aluminum one is definitely thinner by, I would say, probably uh, an eighth of an inch, maybe, uh, thinner in your uh, hand. You can tell that it's just not quite as contoured. It's a little bit more blocky. Uh, so you would be thinking to yourself, okay, well, which one do you, you know, prefer? Uh, for ergonomic comfortability, 
the the Zyta, or excuse me, the Glass Reinforced Nylon model, the cheaper model down here, is actually a more comfortable in your hand with a little bit higher traction because of the checkering that they've done inside the GRN. It's actually gonna be a little bit more comfortable in your hand than the um, aluminum model. But we'll talk about it also with the pocket clip. For an EDC knife, I actually prefer the um, aluminum model this one up here I, I just there's something about it that it connects with me a little bit more it, it's a little bit different than what we know from kershaw kershaw does so many knives that look like this lower model down here and uh, this one just kind of stands out a little bit feels a little bit more like a pocket knife and is a little bit slimmer in your hand and in your pocket so that's a big plus for me when i'm talking about an edc knife now if you're doing really hard woods lots of like uh you know feather stick making and hard pushing um you, you'll actually have a little bit more comfortability with the cheaper model with the grn uh, but for average edc tasks the aluminum one feels fine in your hand it feels like most other pocket knives out there on the market and i actually prefer the aluminum one even though the glass reinforced nylon model is actually a little bit more comfortable so i'll give it a five out of five on the ergonomic rating of the cheaper grn model and i'm going to give it a four out of five on the ergonomic rating for the more expensive aluminum handled blade even though i like the one that has the aluminum handle with the lower uh ergonomic all right rating. so the deployment is based off of um, a finger flipper design. You can see here, they're both pronounced really nice there on the knives. No thumb studs. I'm more of a thumb stud kind of guy, but flippers, as long as they activate well, uh, are gonna you know do just fine. These ones are really well designed. They're stick up, they're pronounced. They have jimping on both of them, so they're very easy to grab. Your finger's not gonna slip off. And just very fast with the speed safe open assist. You know, that spring loaded system is gonna be very fast for your knife, very easy for you to disengage, open and close one handed, that's another big you know feature for me that i'm always looking at hey can i open and close this knife one-handed yes you absolutely can i've heard some people kind of complaining that the um, angle right here on the flipper is a little abrupt and a little painful i have not found that to be the case and you can always take you know some sandpaper or a little dremel tool kind of rub that down a little bit if it is for you but i haven't had any issues at all with the deployment very fast with the speed safe open assist very quick and very easy to use those finger flippers on either one of the models of the link so i did want to show you the liner lock here real quick guys this is a very solid liner lock about as thick as any blur kershaw blur and a lot of their other uh, budget models it's not too thick not too thin um you know it hits about i don't know 40 percent of the blade back there and it locks into place each time the travel isn't too um, too less or too much, you know, it doesn't go too far to the right or too far to the left, engages very solidly and isn't gonna, you know, uh, wobble the blade. There's zero blade play left, right, up, down on both of these models. So that liner lock is very solid, very sturdy, and you can definitely rely on it to keep your blade locked into place without it popping to the left or to the right. So the pocket clips are exactly the same for both models. They're blacked out, which I really like a lot. They are tip up only left or right. So that's real nice that they've offered that for lefties or righties. And with the flippers, that's gonna be perfect. You're not gonna complain at all, regardless if you're left or right-handed, totally ambidextrous blade. Got nice lanyard holes right there. So uh, not a, you know, a whole lot to talk about in that sense. Let's go ahead and put it in my pocket, both of these knives, and so you can kind of see how they ride. And I'll tell you my overall feeling on the pocket carry and the pocket clips for this link. Here's the GRN one in my pocket. You can see there, rides well. I really like the blackout pocket clip. You can see the, the lanyard hole, real nice. It will protrude rather high out of your pocket. So that is something to know. It's kind of hard to tell in these pants, but jeans, like you, everyone can see that you're rocking uh, that pocket knife. Then it does give you that little row that we've looked at with the handle for a little bit of traction to pull out of your pocket, open the blade, close it up, put it back into place. So the, the pocket clip overall is really well designed. And here's the aluminum handled one, exactly the same. You can see there, not a whole lot of difference at all. Now, since it is aluminum, there isn't quite as much traction as there is on the GRN model. So it's not as difficult. You just gotta kinda have to pinch it a little bit more, pull it out, deploy it, put it back into place. You may wanna run a little bit of either like skateboard tape right there, or this may be the model, if this is the one you're gonna rock, that has uh, a lanyard on it. So that's just something kind of to consider. But between the two, if you're to ask me, okay, which one of these do I prefer to ride in my pocket and carry? 
I'm going to have to say the aluminum one because of the thinner handle that we've already talked about. It just rides in my pocket a little bit better, and I like, like EDCing it a lot better than this one just for some reason. It just fits in my pocket a little bit better, feels a little bit better. I just like it more uh, in my pocket and how it rides. Well, folks, sadly, it is time for us to end this review on the link. And I uh, gotta give you my likability. Do I like these knives? Of course I like these knives. Are you kidding me? For the quality, the design, there's just a lot going for these blades. Now, there's something kind of a, you know, a little unique, and I say this sometimes, in my likability, and just in any you know of my rating systems, just because I give it a certain rating doesn't mean that I'm gonna either like it or not like it. So uh, when it comes to value and ergonomics, the cheaper model is obviously the better choice. The uh, glass reinforced nylon has a little bit more traction, or the uh, yeah glass reinforced nylon has a little bit more traction and it's a little bit more ergonomic. It's a little more rounded. It's a little bit more full in your hand. And then obviously you're you know saving a little bit of money. You're so saving a little bit of the greenbacks. So you would think that this would be my favorite one of the two. Wrong. This is my favorite of the two. It's a little bit more expensive, but it just rides in my pocket a little bit more, uh, a little bit better. You know, it just is a little bit slimmer, even though heavier, you know, it's half an ounce heavier and usually I care about weight too. Um, but there's just something about this knife that connects with me that this one doesn't. It might be because Kershaw has made so many blades that look so similar to this, black handles, uh, you know, stone wash finish. I mean, half their line, if not more, look like this. So uh, the fact that it's got the aluminum handle scales, the black, uh, you know, coating on it, just all those things just add up to be just a little bit, even though it's a more expensive, heavier, less ergonomic knife by a, just a, a slight margin, this is my favorite of the two. So guys, uh, if you are thinking about the link, hopefully that this video is pointing you in the right direction, showed you what the link has to offer in both the higher end and lower end models of the two. Uh, both are great blades. Either one really up to you, which you will, which one you prefer, but either one is going to serve you well and is a great U.S. offering in the budget area and budget price point from Kershaw. So thank you again, Kershaw, please. I hope, you know, that you guys continue to make some more 420 high carbon steel, um, you know, budget budget offerings as well as your premium offerings here in the U.S. Uh, I guarantee you more and more people will always want to purchase your blades when they see a U.S. stamp on there. So guys, thank you so much for checking out the channel. Please check us out on all the relevant social media. Subscribe, comment, like, share this video. And as always, remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.